Okay, this video we're going to be pulling out a factor of negative 1 and then simplifying the fractions. So here's the example is 1, this example is 2, uh, third example, example is 3, example is 4, and one example for example 5. Okay, so please use the um, index on the left to pick which examples you're stuck on, if any. And uh, also, you know, first take notes on the video itself, all of it, please, if you can. And uh, we will start with examples one. We have x plus 4 over negative x minus 4. Doesn't look like we can uh, simplify this, I guess. But you might notice that, you know, these two numbers here are, ne are negatives. So you can actually pull out a negative 1 from both terms. And think negative 1 times what gives me negative x times x, isn't it? And negative 1 times what gives me negative 4? How about positive 4, right? And if I check that, negative 1 times x is negative 1x, negative 1 times 4 is minus 4, and that is, you know, negative x minus 4. So what I have is, of course, x plus 4 all over negative 1 times x plus 4, and now, what you should do is put parentheses around the top of this fraction because you have x plus 4 over x plus 4. And they are common factors. And they can be cross-canceled, and they give 1s. So what I have is actually 1 on the top, and negative 1 times 1, negative 1 on the bottom. And this whole thing uh, simplifies to be just the number negative 1. Okay, so this whole fraction works out to be just the number negative one. Whoops, take that out. So press pause on the video and do this one. It's very similar. Once again, I can pull a negative one out from the top of this fraction. Negative one times x gives negative x. Negative one times positive five gives negative five. And so this fraction simplifies to be negative one times x plus five all over x plus 5. Okay. Now I can put parentheses around the bottom and cross cancel common factors. They give 1's. And so this, fra this whole fraction becomes negative 1 times 1. That's negative 1 all over 1. And of course negative 1 over 1 is just the number negative 1. So the answer is negative 1. Okay. So example 2 aren't quite as obvious. Okay, it was obvious to see if you have two negative terms you can pull a negative one out from each one. But I'm here to show you and to remind you that you can actually pull a negative one out from the bottom here anyway. Even though this one's negative and this one is all, is positive, you can still put out and pull a negative one out and factorize this negative x plus three expression. Okay, and I'll show you how. Watch. Negative 1 times what gives negative x? Well, x, right? Negative 1 times what gives positive 3? How about a negative 3, right? And if we check that, negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. So I can actually pull out a negative 1 from this. Even though this happens to be a positive sign, I can still pull a negative 1 out from it. And it, you know, you end up with a negative sign there. So this fraction can be simplified as x minus 3, rewritten as x minus 3 over negative 1 times x minus 3. And now once again, I can put parentheses around the top. And now we can see clearly that this is the same factor as this. And so they, those guys cross cancel and they give 1s. And so this whole fraction becomes 1 over. And on the bottom we have negative 1 times 1. That's just negative 1. And so the whole fraction simplifies to be positive over negative is negative. 1 over 1 is 1. Right? So press pause in the video and do this example. x minus 8 over negative x plus 8. It's, it's exactly the same. Okay, it was very similar. So, <laughs> And the first step is to pull a negative 1 out from the bottom of the fraction. Okay, pull out negative 1 from negative x plus 8 and what do you get? Negative 1 times what gives negative x? 
positive x, right? Negative 1 times what gives positive 8? Would that possibly be negative 8? And check that. Negative 1 times x, negative x, negative 1 times negative 8, plus 8, right? So this entire fraction simplifies to be x minus 8 all over negative 1 times x minus 8. Okay, and we can cross-cancel common factors on the top and bottom. And we simply have, of course, 1 over negative 1 times 1, 1 over negative 1, which, of course, is negative 1. The answer is negative 1 there, right? Once again. So let's have a look at examples 3. Okay. We have x minus 2 over 2 minus x. Right? Now, um, very similar to the last ones we did. First of all, we have a positive x and a negative x, a positive 2 and a negative 2. Whenever you have that situation, the same terms... Uh, but different signs on each one. You should suspect that you can actually pull out a negative 1 and simplify the fraction. Okay. So first of all we do this. Negative 1 times what gives the positive 2 here? Negative 2, right? Negative 1 times negative 2 gives positive 2. Negative 1 times what gives negative x? plus x, isn't it, right? So the bottom is factorized as negative 1 times negative 2 plus x. So we have x minus 2 in the top, and on the bottom I have negative 1 times. Now hold on a second, don't write that in just yet, because isn't negative 2 plus x the same thing as a positive x minus 2, right? What I'm saying to you is, you know, for example, if x was 10, or if x is 100, isn't negative 2 plus 100 the same thing as 100 minus 2? Negative 2 and 100 is 98. Um, 100 minus 2 is 98, right? So negative 2 plus x has to be the same thing as, you know, x minus 2, right? Because the x is positive and the, the 2 is negative in both cases. So the negative 2 plus x can be written as positive x minus 2, can't it? So now we actually have the same quantity on here and here. x minus 2, x minus 2. These guys can be cross-cancelled. We get positive 1 over negative 1 times 1, positive 1 over negative 1, and a positive over negative is a negative. 1 over 1 is 1, right? So press pause and see if you can do this guy by yourself. And you probably can't. That's okay. Most people can't. So... What I'm going to ask you to do is pull a negative 1 out from the bottom of this fraction and see what happens. So you need to ask yourself, first of all, negative 1 times what gives positive 9? Negative 1 times negative 9, right? Then go negative 1 times what gives negative x? Well, isn't it positive x, right? There we go. So that's 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 what that is. And you can check it. Negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9. Negative 1 times uh, x is minus x. So it's, you know, 9 minus x. So we can rewrite the fraction now as x minus 9 all over negative 1 times, um, you know, negative 9 plus x. Now, negative 9 plus x, this has a positive x term, you see, and a negative 9. So I can rewrite this thing as positive x minus 9, can't I? Because it's positive x and a negative 9, same thing. And now I have the same factor on the top and bottom of this fraction, and these factors cross. Cancel, and I get 1 over negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And, of course, this answer is simply negative 1. Okay. So examples 4 are similar. Um, we've got 3x minus 15 over 5 minus x. So what I want you to do on this first example is just factorize the top. What can you do with the top? Well, can't you, doesn't 3 go into both terms? You can pull a 3 out, right? 3 times what gives 3x? 3 times x? 3 times what gives negative 15? Negative 5, right? 
Now, before we write this thing, just have a look. Now, hold on a second. We have a positive x and a negative x, a negative 5 and a positive 5. In that situation, always suspect that you could pull out a negative 1 somewhere, right? Always suspect that, and we can. Pull a negative 1 out from this bottom, and what do you see? Well, negative 1 times negative 5 gives positive 5, doesn't it? And negative 1 times positive x gives negative x. So this bottom can be written, rewritten as negative 1 times, and hold on a second, we have a positive x and a negative 5. So that's a positive x and a negative 5, x minus 5, right? And now, look, this factor is the same as this, so this whole fraction simply gives me 3 times 1, 3 over negative 1. And 3 over negative 1, of course, is negative 3. So the answer to this whole thing is the number negative 3. And that's nice and neat, isn't it? Um, now, press pause and do this guy. x minus 6 all over 12 minus 2x. Okay. Well, the first thing we should do is pull a 2 out from the bottom here. I know 2 goes into 12 and 2x, isn't it? So if I pull a 2 out, 2 times 6 is 12 minus x. See that? So I have 2 times 6 minus x. Now, um, we can now work on the 6 minus x if we want, okay? Because that's similar to the x minus 6, right? So you could, once again, you know, pull a negative 1 out. Negative 1 times negative 6 uh, plus x would give that. So this, of course, is negative 1 times um, x minus 6, okay? But we also have this 2 being multiplied by the thing, right? So the bottom is, in fact, negative 2 times x minus 6, okay? So one way of doing this is to write that, well, it's x minus 6 over negative 2 times x minus 6, okay? Or I guess we could have pulled out a negative 2 at, to begin with. In any case, x minus 6 is are the same. And we get uh, 1 over negative 2. That's a positive over negative is a negative, And that's negative 1 half. Okay, negative 1 half is the answer. Um, I guess there was probably an easy... Is there, are there easier ways to do this? Probably. x minus 6 over 12 minus uh, 2x. You could see that we have... Positive x, negative x, negative 6, positive 12. And you could, you know, cleverly think, well, how about pulling out a negative 2 to begin with? See, because negative 2 times negative 6 gives positive 12. Negative 2 times positive x gives negative 2x. So it might be neater to do it that way. And we have x minus 6 then all over uh, negative 2 times negative 6 plus x is x minus 6, isn't it? And now these factors cross cancel. And once again, of course, I have 1 over negative 2, which is negative 1 half. Okay, negative 1 half is the answer, of course. Um, I guess there we could also have another way to do this is to work on the top part and pull out a negative 1 from the top. And you have negative x plus 6 if you do that. So you would have on the top negative 1 times uh, negative x plus 6 is positive 6 minus x. And on the bottom we could pull out, say, a 2, and we'd have 6 minus x here. So you have negative 1 over 2 times 6 minus x. And now these guys cross cancel. You get negative 1 over 2, which, of course, is negative 1 half. Same thing. Anyway, um, I don't know which method <laughs> you prefer to use. But actually, I should probably give you another example of this just for practice. Okay, So what if you had um, 15 minus 3x all over x minus 5? Can you do that? 15 minus 3x all over x minus 5. Um, in this case, um, uh, I'm not sure wh which which you prefer, really, to be honest. You can pull a 
a 3 out of the top, I guess, and you can see that you would get a 5 minus x, okay, and then you can work on the 5 minus x. Or you might prefer to kind of notice that it would be better to pull out a, say, negative 3 from the top, I guess. A negative 3 times negative 5 gives 15, and negative 3 times positive x ends up giving the negative 3x. So this fraction turns out to be negative 3 times negative 5 plus x is the same thing as x minus 5. And we have x minus 5 in the bottom. So that's the neatest way to do it. And then these guys cross cancel. And we have, of course, negative 3 over 1, which is just the number negative 3. Okay. And last but not least, the likes of example 5. Um, I guess I'll just do that there. The likes of example 5, 4 minus x over this. What can you see? Well, straight away, this is negative 4, this is positive 4. This guy is negative x, this is positive x. So these two are, you know, they're opposites, in fact. Each term is an opposite sign. And uh, on the top, I should actually pull out a negative 1. And what happens? Negative 1 times negative 4 gives positive 4, right? And then negative 1 times what gives negative x? Negative 1 times positive x, right? So on the top I have negative 1 times negative 4 plus x is the same thing as positive x minus 4. And on the bottom I have x plus 4 times x minus 4. And I can cross cancel common factors, which is the x minus 4s. And so this thing gives me negative 1 all over x plus 4, and you should probably write that with the negative in line with the fraction bar, negative 1 over x plus 4, okay? So the negative sign can be the, on the top of a fraction or in line with the fraction bar, and this is considered simplified form when the negative sign is in line with the fraction bar, okay?